Hello, this is Veronica Hicks welcoming you to Countdown to the Coronation, designed to give you as much information as possible before the day itself. On the day, there won't be time to bring you all the colour, pomp and ritual as it's happening. The subject for now is regalia. Where there is royalty, there is regalia and pageantry. And the British monarchy is steeped in ancient traditions. To explain a little of what will happen on May the 6th, marking the first double coronation since Queen Elizabeth's parents, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, in 1937. I'm looking back 70 years to the late Queen's coronation, because in all but some details, stripped down as they may be, the ceremony will be the same, enshrined as it is in the Liber Regalis, the Royal Book, an English medieval illuminated manuscript, which was most likely compiled in 1382 setting out the procedure for the coronation of England's then-new queen, Anne of Bohemia. This 34-page document serves as a guide to whoever is responsible for organising the coronation, which falls always to the Earl Marshal, the Duke of Norfolk. I'll talk about the regalia now, but nearer the time when the Order of Service is published, I will make that available. A coronation service is made up of six different sections. The monarch is presented to the people, the recognition, makes promises to their subjects and God, the oath. The monarch is blessed with holy oil, the anointing, and receives the royal regalia, including a sword and an orb, that is the investing, before finally being crowned. The crown jewels, which are a part of the coronation regalia, are sacred and secular objects, which symbolise the service and responsibilities of the monarch, and have played a central role in coronation services for hundreds of years. These crown jewels are held in trust by the monarch on behalf of the nation, and when not on display, they're kept in the Tower of London. We've already examined in detail the two crowns that play their vital part in the coronation, the St Edward the Confessor's crown and the Imperial State crown. I just want to add one tiny detail I missed, and that is that there are four large pearls resting on the rich purple cap on the Imperial State crown, and these pearls are known as the Queen Elizabeth's earrings. Before becoming part of the Imperial State Crown, these four pearls had belonged to many famous historical figures beforehand, believed to have come from Catherine de' Medici, received as a wedding present when she married Henri II of France, Henry II. She gave the pearls to her daughter-in-law, Mary, Queen of Scots, Mary was later imprisoned at the orders of her cousin, Queen Elizabeth I of England, in 1569, and they became known as Queen Elizabeth's earrings when they were sold to the monarch. So now, to the regalia that will feature in the ceremony. There are two maces, or staffs of office, both made of oak, covered in silver, and which date back to the reign of Charles II. They are the ceremonial emblems of authority, which are carried before the sovereign as is the sword of state, symbolising royal authority. A steel blade with a silver gilt hilt, enclosed in a wooden scabbard covered in velvet. During the reign of King Charles II, two such swords were made, but only one has survived. The remaining one has been used at several coronations, and is always carried with the point upwards. The scabbard bears the coat of arms of King William III. Then there is the golden St Edward's staff with its steel spike from an earlier staff which was often referred to as the long scepter and carried as a relic of the royal saint Edward the Confessor. Three further swords will be used during the coronation procession, the sword of temporal justice signifying the monarch's role as head of the armed forces, the sword of spiritual justice signifying the monarch as defender of the faith and the sword of mercy or katana which has a blunted tip symbolising the sovereign's mercy. These swords were first used at the coronation of King Charles I in 1626 and are carried without their scabbards, with their points up. The most important and most holy part of the ceremony is the anointing. This is where the Archbishop of Canterbury pours holy oil from the ampulla, vessel, into the coronation spoon, a silver gilt spoon that dates back to 1349. It serves to emphasise the spiritual status of the sovereign, who, until the 17th century, was considered to have been appointed directly by God. The anointing oil is made up of sesame oil, rose, jasmine, nerily, a sweet, honeyed essential oil from the blossom of the bitter orange tree, benzoin, which is an organic compound deriving from the oil of bitter almond, 
amber and orange blossom. Usually a batch was made to last a few coronations, but in May 1941 a bomb hit the deanery at the abbey, destroying the file, so a new batch was made. The chrism oil, which is what it's called, with which the king and the queen consort will be anointed, would have been consecrated in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem in March and will be contained in the ampulla made of gold and cast in the form of an eagle with outspread wings. The oil is poured through an aperture in the eagle's beak. The ampulla was supplied for the coronation of King Charles II in 1661 by the crown jeweller of the time, Robert Viner, and is based on an earlier smaller vessel, which in turn was based on a 14th century legend in which the Virgin Mary appeared to Sir Thomas a Becket and presented him with a golden eagle and a vial of oil for anointing future kings of England. The silver gilt coronation spoon is the oldest object in use at coronations, having first been recorded in 1349 among the regalia in Westminster Abbey. In 1649, the spoon was sold to the yeoman of King Charles I's wardrobe during those 11 years when England had no king, but it was returned for King Charles II's coronation in 1661, when small seed pearls were added to the decoration of the handle. The anointing of their majesties, the most sacred moment of the coronation, will not be televised, in keeping with the precedent set by Her Majesty's coronation in 1953. The Liber Regalis states that the Archbishop of Canterbury will make the sign of the cross with the holy oil on the royal foreheads, hands and chests to show that the monarchs have been chosen by God. After the anointing, the majesties are invested with a number of ornaments symbolising the nature of kingship. The Lord Great Chamberlain presents the Golden Spurs, the symbol of chivalry. The spurs were made in 1661 for King Charles II, but the use of spurs dates back to King Richard I the Lionheart. The gold, leather and red velvet spurs symbolise knighthood. Next, the Archbishop of Canterbury presents the jewelled Sword of Offering. It has a steel blade mounted in gold and set with jewels, which form a rose, a thistle and a shamrock, oak leaves, acorns and lion's heads. The sword is contained in a gold-covered leather scabbard. Traditionally, the monarch is offered the two armils, Bracelets about two and a half inches wide, that's six centimetres wide, made from gold, champ levé, and engraved enamel, with the national emblems of the rose, the thistle, fleur de lis, and harp, and embellished with dark blue florets and red pellets between light blue enamel herringbone borders. They're lined in deep red velvet, and are thought to relate to ancient symbols of knighthood and military leadership. They've been referred to during previous coronations as the bracelets of sincerity and wisdom and were used up until King George VI's coronation in 1937. Finally, His Majesty, clothed in ceremonial robes, the cloth of gold, the robe royal, and wearing the sovereign's ring, is handed the orb and scepter. The sovereign's ring, known as the wedding ring of England, is composed of a sapphire with a ruby cross set in diamonds. During the ceremony, the ring is placed on the fourth finger of the sovereign by the archbishop as a symbol of kingly dignity. Sovereigns from King Edward VII onwards have used it at their coronations, except for Queen Victoria, whose fingers were so small that the ring couldn't be reduced far enough in size, and she had to have her own made. The orb that weighs four pounds and nine ounces is formed from a hollow gold sphere, actually two separate hollow hemispheres joined together at the central jewelled band with clusters of emeralds, rubies and sapphires set into an enamel mount surrounded by small rose-cut diamonds, all this between single rows of tiny pearls. Overall, it contains 600 precious stones. At the top of the orb, there is an octagonal step-cut amethyst the size of a raspberry, surmounted by a medieval cross set with diamonds, a table-cut sapphire in the centre on one side and an emerald on the other and with pearls at the angles and at the end of each arm of the cross, mounted with clusters of emeralds, rubies and sapphires. The orb is a representation of the sovereign's power, symbolising the Christian world, with the cross mounted on a globe, and the bands of jewels dividing it into three sections represent the three continents known in medieval times. In 1671, Colonel Thomas Blood attempted to steal the sovereign's orb along with the other crown jewels. The orb was recovered but was damaged during Blood's escape. 
but was subsequently repaired. During the coronation, the Archbishop of Canterbury places the orb in the monarch's right hand and then the orb is placed on the altar before the monarch is crowned. The scepter is a symbol of the monarch's power, representing the sovereign's authority over worldly affairs. It consists of a long gold rod in three sections with enameled collars at the intersections, adorned with diamonds, emeralds, rubies, sapphires and amethysts. Near the top of the scepter, also known as the sovereign's scepter with cross, there is an enameled heart-shaped structure which holds a huge drop-shaped diamond, Kalinan I, or the Star of Africa, weighing 530.2 carats. It was added to the scepter in 1910. The diamond was officially presented by South Africa to King Edward VII and remains the largest colourless cut diamond in the world. The cross at the top of the scepter has an emerald in its centre. Another royal scepter used in coronation ceremonies is the scepter with the dove, topped with a model of the bird, symbolising peace and unity. The king's iteration carries a dove with outstretched wings. More on robes and ceremonial garb and what Queen Camilla will be wearing will be available on this website. Thanks for listening.